Greetings and welcome to another date on the Journalist Hangout Show. Uh, this is the last edition for the week and today. I'm Citizen Jones Osen. On the program this evening, you want to know that the President has warned ministers, MDAs and others against disrespecting the National Assembly. South South Governors support forensic audit of the NDDC, a national probe, well, National Assembly probe, but they have kicked against attempt to abduct Nunye as the lawyer, writes President Buhari, seeks removal of Apabio, Ponde and Ojugo. And later on, we'll share this with you. Um, but but let, let me say, I'm, I'm hanging out as always with Baba Tunde Kayo de Oti Kola de Koman, i.e. 12 BKO. Here we go again. Uh, GD, welcome. I greet you. Okay, I answer you reluctantly. Okay. All right, we are, we are going to take care of Dari Udu for our coin because of the show. Please welcome. The team is ready. I hope you are. Is relishing the cozy relationship between it and the National Assembly is an understatement. Any attempt to throw a spanner in the works must therefore be revolting. President Mohamedou Buhari has moved to solidify the agreeable interrelation. At a parley between him and the leadership of the National Assembly, the number one citizen at the seat of government, Abuja, warned ministers and heads of agencies and departments not to disrespect or better still undermine the National Assembly. At the meeting with the president were Senate President Ahmed Lawan and House Speaker Femi Majabiamila. The president drew attention to recent events at the National Assembly and admonished officials of the executive branch not to disrespect the legislative arm for whom he had a lot of respect. Uh, it's only natural. It's only natural. Yeah. If you're enjoying a cozy relationship, no, no, nothing comes in the middle. Yes, uh, you are not going to um, sit by and watch um, anyone um, endanger a good relationship. We've been in this kind of situation before, where the National Assembly would at all times cooperate with the executive, and then some individuals um, within the executive would then see that as an opportunity to disrespect the um, lawmakers. And I think that it was a good move for the leadership of the National Assembly to go and meet the president and um, let it be clear to him that certain moves by some ministers are likely to hurt the charming relationship that the president enjoys with the National Assembly at this time. This is way better than um, what happened during the Eighth Assembly, where we had what looked like an adversarial... Mm. Um, legislative uh, arm. Uh, yes, legislative arm. Saraki is out of the way now. We have um, the saddle the Senate president, who once said to Nigerians that whatever the president asks of us, we will do. It was unnecessary um, for him to say that because if the president says, if you are telling us that whatever the president says uh, you should do, you will do, that means you are not oversighting the executive. You are simply a glorified robber star. Oh, yeah. So he probably did not. Uh, I appreciate the weight or the significance of what is said at the time. But the import of what is said is very clear that they would like to support the president in achieving his uh, aims and objectives. But you can't have a National Assembly keen to back you all the way keen to approve your, your methods, keen to back your projects, and then some of your ministers 
will be behaving in a manner that suggests that they do not even want any form of oversighting on the part of the National mm. Assembly. Mm. And this is what makes federal lawmakers to get hungry. And they, are, they, they went to the president to say, see, some of what is happening we do not like to see because this will endanger the good relationship that we have had up to now. Remember when the National Assembly, I think it was the House of Reps, that sent for, that um, invited the service chiefs. Yeah. And rather than go there, the service chiefs sent their juniors. That was very disrespectful. Okay. In fact, okay. it was irresponsible. So, but in the end, the House of Reps speaker, a man that I continue to see him as someone capable of providing leadership when it matters the most, said, look, it is the service chiefs that we want. Yeah. They insisted and invariably the service chiefs had to show up. If they had not complained, they yeah. would have made that a habit. Whereby when you send for the number one man, he just looks for one of his boys and he tells him to go and uh, yeah, see. Right. No, that's not yeah. what we want. You know, Dari Udufalkan, I just told you about, is standing by. Dari, good evening to you. Great to see you again. Uh, good evening. It, yeah. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, your perspective now, an overview. Uh, well, uh, like uh, the master said, uh, we have a national assembly that is holding its own, in spite of whatever situation we have found ourselves. And I'm particularly glad about that. Because it is one thing to have a president who wants to have teamwork, who wants people to work, every uh, arm of government to work, and uh, in the end, you have uh, uh, a system that it is functioning. But it is another thing the president may, as he, I want to call them in the media, the president may. Be they in the military, in the bureaucracy, or in the president itself, or the minister. It is another thing when they feel, look, we can deal with the National Assembly the way we did fit. It will not go well. And we have seen a lot of infractions. I think this National Assembly is particularly understanding, and we should give it to them. Mm. But it's also good that they have too many chats, both the federal president and the speaker, who are not pushovers in the business of governance. If we had found ourselves saddled with people who are learners uh, using that strict term, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be in trouble today. The National Assembly, though, obviously do not want to clash with the President. You can see that they have made, they've made a lot of sacrifices to ensure that it's peace, love and understanding and cooperation. Between this, uh, in this administration, meaning a presidency, that the executive, and the legislature, that's the National Assembly, working on it has. A lot of sacrifices have been made by the National Assembly. But we cannot say the state of the executive as we speak today. Yeah. And I'm glad, yeah. rather than responding to the minister or getting angry with the soldiers who feel they are beneath them, they went to press the president. And the president has issued another. Respect the National Assembly. My fear is this. After this incident, any infraction from any member of the executive arm against the National Assembly who set a bad uh, situation on course. What we saw between the general minister of uh, uh, labor and the National Assembly is uncalled for. Forget the drama, drama. Let us put aside the politics of it. Yeah. In governance, it is, it is not something that should have happened. All right. These are just have oversight function, and they are trying to carry it out and go there and with a lot of braggadocious activity. That's government. The law of people needs to be told that that citizen is different from government, and we should always get it back. So I am happy the president listens to the, the leaders of the National Assembly and he prepared a way forward. I am only happy that his men, any year they might be, to follow suit and listen to his instructions. Okay. There is no okay. need to create unnecessary chaos. We can avoid it. Okay, then. Um, Gidi, but you see, there are two sides to this coin. Mm. Um, it's a give and take thing. It's, yes. If we go back to uh, Barrister um, Kiamo's uh, 
you know, meeting with them. Yes. What happened was avoidable. Yes. Um, it was avo avoidable. Kiamo merely demonstrated his um, lack of experience in politics. He's an activist, he's a lawyer, um, a senior advocate, a young senior advocate. But at the same time, you are a politician, a minister of the Federal Republic. You must learn how to relate with the National Assembly. It's not every time that you will be quoting from the pages of the Constitution. <laughs> it doesn't always work. You are dealing with hard-boned politicians, <laughs> and you are grandstanding yeah. before them. I was looking at him. Yeah. What he has done now is to say, oh, the president mandated him to go ahead with the recruitment. But of course, nobody was there. Maybe it was simply the uh, chief, of, uh, chief of staff that said, go ahead. No, so, no, but, but you talk, you talk sometimes, uh, uh, even if in the past, yes. about the president's body language. Yes. This is because of Kiyamo's matter that they went there. Okay. I can confirm okay. that. Okay. It's because of the way Kiyamo behaved to them that they went there. Now, whatever happens, whether it was the chief of staff that told, told him, because the ministers don't always have access to the president. It's not in all cases that as a, as a minister you want to see the president and then you, you see the president. In fact, the president has directed them to deal more with his chief of staff. He said that uh, after they, they were inaugurated. So whether it was the chief of staff who merely in the exercise of his, um, I mean, in, in doing his job as the, yeah. as the chief of staff and uh, the president's representative said, go and continue with um, the recruitment. The truth is that decision has been taken. You don't then expect the president to take it back. Okay. You don't expect the president to take it back. But the president has now, so that it doesn't happen again. Kiyamo clearly has gotten away with this. You understand? Mm. Uh -huh. So, but the president is saying henceforth, disrespect of the National Assembly will no longer be tolerated because whether you like it or not, even when after, even after his colleague, the senior minister, apologized on his behalf, Kiyamo still remained unrepentant and was saying that uh, he, would, he, he, he saw no reason to apologize and then he said, the president has told me to go ahead. The truth is, in future, you will need them. Yeah. And then they will play hardball. And you will not like it. That is why they've gone to the president. So the president has given them that assurance that in future, this will not happen again. Uh, uh, all right, Jide, we you have know? company. We have company. Uh, Osondo is reaching us from Lagos. Osondo, I greet you. Good evening. Hello, brother Osondo. Are you there? Better luck next time. So... So, he's, he's got away with this, but the president has made this clear. He has ruled a line in the sand. Now, look, this will not happen next time. He has given them that assurance because clearly they will leave it and they went to him. See, it's you with respect. Now see what's happening. It is within our duties that we have done our over oversighting within yeah. our oversighting that we have done what we have done. But you can see that some of your people are disrespectful. What I don't want to see is a situation in which you are called to come and give account. Okay. And because you are a minister, you feel too big to come before them. We have seen that happen in the past. Some will simply send their deputies. You can, if you can, um, if you are happy to take the job, you should be happy to defend your work. Yeah. So simply sending people to represent you is disrespectful. And they have their reasons for doing that. So I, w I want to see a situation in which our democracy functions the way it should function. Yeah. You, uh, are, you serve as checks on the executive. Nobody must get in the way of you doing your, doing job. your job as checks That's on the it. executive. Okay. And of course, the executive too 
has its own role to play. And mm. we have the judiciary. None must encroach on the work of the other. Mm. None must disrespect the other. Yeah. That is how we can have um, an, a democracy that everyone will be happy with. All right. Let, let me quickly go to uh, uh, Dare again. Uh, Dare, oh. if you recall, uh, I think it was yesterday, Professor Ponde, the uh, acting MD of the ND, N, NDDC, had a near, a, a near, you know, uh, what, what do I call it now? Battle with, with the same National Assembly. Yeah. Given what Jidea said, you think uh, somebody's not learning anything? Especially, uh, it, 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 that, that's what I was saying. Like, it is not just about the minister. You see, this thing started, and like I explained, it is far becoming the norm. People are beginning to think that there are necessities and there are limitations to instructions or check they will submit themselves to with the National Assembly without checking what the Constitution says. What are the functions of men and the men in the National Assembly? Have they crossed their boundary? Mm -hmm. Have they asked for too much? If the answer is no, then you are committing serious infractions. What happened again uh, with Monday and the National Assembly Committee looking into issues that concern the NDC is another embarrassment to what we call our democracy. Mm. If we must practice democracy, we must practice, practice it politically. There is no, there is, we, we will not achieve much if we bend the rules. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, the National Assembly must not be allowed to uh, uh, or, 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 or check this. The National Assembly has no right to do this. What does the Constitution say? Yeah. The Constitution says they have to fight portions. And if they are still doing anything within, the context of that oversight function, you have to submit yourself to them. Ordinarily, most okay, of okay. these appointees uh, went through the National Assembly when they were appointed. Why is it that now, I mean, for confirmation day, why is it that now that you have to come to them? In the process of carrying out of duty, you find it uh, too much for them to ask. Yeah, that, I that, think that, that. let things must be learned as soon as possible. Thank you for your submission. Jude, before we pass over, as they say, um, the debate will continue. Yeah. The chairman of the House Committee, looking at the NDDC, mm. according to Professor Ponde, mm. has questions to answer. And so you are asking if what the MD, acting MD did was right. You can't be a judge in your own case. Well, if you see the picture I'm, pick, I'm painting. He has no right to walk out on them. He can complain, but to walk out was irresponsible. Okay. And he has shown that he's not fit to hold public office. Those guys are mandated by the Constitution to do what they are doing. And you come by, simply by having reservations against an individual, walk out on an entire committee. Okay. That is investigating. You can't, you can't do that. Of, of the people's yes. representatives. People, lawyers demand sometimes that they should give them, give their client another judge. You've seen that happen. Oh, yeah. DFCC, in, in Fayoshe uh, versus DFCC, said that, look, we do no longer, we do not, uh, we no longer trust. have trust yeah. Yeah. that we will get justice in the hands of this woman. That's the woman who jailed in Yame. And at the end of the day, the judge had to step down. But you don't achieve that by walking out of the court. Oh, you, you don't. You, you don't. don't. I agree. Well, uh, the lessons are always taught in politics, but you keep wondering if the practitioners are learning. Okay, then, to our next story. You know, the English expression, may you live in interesting times, is really playing out in our jurisdiction. The Niger Delta uh, Development Commission, NDDC, seemingly provided comic relief of some sort. Governors of the South, South region on Thursday took a common stance on the need for a forensic audit of the NDDC, the National Assembly set light on the Commission's finances, and the vulgar attempt to abduct the former acting MD of the body, uh, Joy Nunye. Now, the governors unanimously asked for the immediate removal of the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, uh, Godswill Akwabio, the NDDC acting uh, MD Professor Daniel Ponde, and the Executive Director Projects of the body uh, Dr. Cairo Ojugo.
fire on the mountain? Yes, uh, and it is positive fire on the mountain. Um, I think everyone is convinced now that the NDDC is a bureau of corruption <laughs> and that something urgent has to be done. You can even see from the statement from the presidency emanating from um, President Buhari that the president wants quick resolution of this yeah. matter. Yeah. He wants the um, investigating teams in the National Assembly as well as the uh, forensic experts, uh, um, auditors, auditors yeah. that they claim that they invited should work together and deliver judgment quickly so that we can put this Thing, uh, this, this uh, horrible experience behind us. Everyone who truly wants the progress of Nigeria cannot be happy with what is coming out of the NDDC. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's shameful. It stinks to high heavens. And it's been suggested that both the minister and the so-called interim management committee that has shown itself to perhaps be worse than previous management of the NDDC should be shown the door. If that's what we are doing at the EFCC now, those guys should no longer occupy the, the position. And the minister himself, Akpabio, should not be the one saying that he's going to ensure that uh, the people who stole money at the NDDC it's not are dead. With, it's not in his place to yeah. do that because he has questions to answer. And I'm happy that the National Assembly has invited him to show up on Monday to come and defend himself. You can imagine hearing terrible stories like that no electricity, is no. Not, uh, the NDDC is not connected to public electricity so that somebody can continue to supply diesel. <laughs> and look at the kind of money that they are spending. Money meant for students on scholarship abroad. You are paying it to yourselves. You are giving yourself palliatives <laughs> in the season of the COVID-19 season. The rest of us, we are simply doing our work. We get mm. paid for doing our work. We don't get palliatives. The people who need palliatives are different. You get the point that I'm making. Mm. I mean, it revolts on on a, 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 a common sense. It revolts against common sense to hear that these guys who are sitting on billions are telling us that they allocated palliatives to themselves and in the region of 1.5 billion. These monies are paid out before approval. Yes. And they go ahead to. Were they not the same people seeking environment the other day? Mm. Whereas it's the president alone who has the right or the power to write to the National Assembly seeking environment. That's it. They are seeking That's environment it. to try to cover up money that they have spent on budgeted funds that they have spent. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is the thing. This is the corruption going on in the NDDC stinks to high heavens. And we need a resolution of the matter. That is why I, I, I support what the, uh, the governors are saying, that look, it is, the this, this National Assembly have not operated outside of their oversight uh, responsibility. Yeah. Therefore, they should be allowed to continue the investigation. And if people are found guilty, as Serap has suggested, then those people should be shown the door. I believe that we can get to the root of this thing in quick time, because... This thing has been on for, for, for some time. For and years, the bulk yeah. of the money that we are talking about was taken during the pandemic. Yeah. When yeah. no serious work was being done anywhere. Dari, well, it, I, I don't know how you soak this in. Uh, again, you get told, you know, in more established jurisdictions, if you have one or two questions to answer as a public official, you step down. But not so here, mm. Dari. Okay, we lost the connection to him, but, but you know, you, you can take it. You know, before the, uh, do you require the South-South governors to mm -hmm. jointly uh, write, uh, issue a resolution? Look, let these people step down.
They should step uh, ideally. Ideally. Ideally, in other climbs, once your integrity is in question. Co is in question, you step down. If you truly have honor, you step down. You want to wait to see the end of the investigation. But our own people mm -hmm. don't believe in stepping down. Even when they are guilty, they do not show any appetite to leave. They rather would want to continue. So this is what we are seeing. The extent of... When the president said he was going to... Um, that he wanted for, uh, an auditing mm. of the former administration, yeah. I expected that they would go for established an established auditing, uh, yes, a, a farm of auditors. Yeah. But what we are saying is the same people, another the set people. of people took over, and you saddle them with auditing, it, the people who left the same. No, they are not qualified Wait, to do let, that. Let, let's take a commercial break. We'll come back. Just put a ceiling. We'll come back and, and continue. Please stay. NDDC on my mind, on Niger Delta's mind, and of course on the minds of Nigerians. And why not? Dare, we, we have re established contact with Dare. Dare, um, yeah, uh, NDDC on the mind, on your mind. I'm wondering how you react to this. Some sort of comic relief. Yeah, Dare. Audio Palava, you know. Yeah, as we will attempt to get him again. Yeah, so you know, um, if you are, if your office is challenged, especially in the area of uh, integrity, you step down, st stand aside, let the in investigations go on. If you are cleared, you go back. No. That's when you get back your honor. No, no, um, no. But it's not the name of the no, game it's here. Not, it's not our habit. Or is it not? It's not in our DNA. Or not in the constitution. <laughs> No, it's, uh, we, it's not in the constitution. <laughs> it's not everything that you can put in the constitution. It's a moral issue. Yeah. You know, but a lot of our people are not good uh, moral specimens. But, but you see, Cairo Ojubu is the director in charge of projects. But 12 other directors have asked, have been asked to step down. But Cairo is still in the picture. Yeah, because that's the person that Aquabio prefers. Oh, really? Yes. It's Aquabio's uh, favorite. Okay. Uh, Okay. As a, so, 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 do the, you know that in the NDDC, do you know that we have a minister of state for NDDC? Do you know? It should have been uh, uh, Kayamo? Alasho Adura. Kayamo, okay. Kayamo left the place for labor. Yeah, okay. Alasho Adura, Senator Alasho Adura is the junior minister, is the minister of state. You don't get to read about him. I'm because Akwabio's unofficial deputy is Karo Jugo. Oh boy. So the minister, the junior minister, Alasho Adura, the man who likes wearing white uh, dresses, <laughs> has been sidelined. Hmm. We don't hear about him at all. Oh, he's, as, as you always say in this part. Not, been, when was not, the he, last he, time you read about Alasho Adura as minis, no, junior as minister? As you say in this part, he's not carried along. Yes. But, but shouldn't the Minister of State be interested in what happens there? Uh, uh, he should, naturally. He should be interested. But from the look of things, they've, they've, they've taken him out of the picture. And if they're taking you out of the picture, what do you do? What yeah. do you do? If you are not brought into these issues and uh, we now have uh, issues of corruption, you'll be happy where you are that, thank God, they shot me out. But this has become an embarrassment to them now. Okay. At least nobody, when they are talking about the people who messed up the place, they will not mention his name. Mm. Okay, we have company now. Awan Hassan is reaching us from Abuja. Awan uh, Hassan, welcome. How do you do? Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. Okay, then. So, your perspectives now. Uh, 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 Baba Jude, good evening. Good evening, Alwa. Uh, you see, uh, this is just most sad situation we found ourselves in this time. Mm. Uh, uh, there are two ministries and, and, and two agencies in those ministries that are fighting each other and, and, and saying things out 
in the public. And these things they are saying are not, are not things that we should just look mm-hmm. over and forget about. And when we don't talk, I am telling you nothing will happen to this. Okay. Uh, the most remote and, and, and uh, 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 remote zone in this country today is the South South. I mm-hmm. served in Bielsa. And I know how they suffer. And I know how things are in Bielsa. And I know how much goes to the South South. Hmm. The richest person in the South South today does, doesn't have good air to breathe. Uh, gas flaring. Children under the age of five die on avoidable diseases in the night Delta. Okay. These people are being given a lot of money to just do this and they can't do it. And with, I just found out today, because I listened to the public hearing uh, in the reps, reps committee on public hearing. I heard when Kola Wale was stating those things out and even saying that they are fat. These are mm. things he has investigated because he knows they can take him to court. Papa Jide, we don't need to wait for National Assembly. National Assembly is a mere resolution. Mm-hmm. The president has the police, has the security agents in his, in his farm. All These right. are things that the DSS they are always with the DGs in the uh, agencies and the, the ministers, those DSS that are always with them give reports about what they do every day. I, I want thank you. Thank you. We got you first time. Uh, we got you first time. Well, clearly what you say that the president should just move in and take a decision. Let these people go. Is the embarrassment is in yeah. uh, I, I, I hear Dari is ready for us now. Dari, welcome back. Uh, are you there? Uh, As I said, NDDC on the mind of everybody, on my mind too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, did you see on the mind? Listening to her. Uh, yeah. I had I had this call. I even had uh, what uh, Azad has to say from Abuja. And that's just the truth. You, you, you find a, a commission that has been giving so much, more, for more than a decade now, the hmm. issue of NBDSP has been on the front burner. But I'm afraid that what happened in 2011, when there was an attempt to probe the NDDC, is repeating itself. Uh, I don't know if you were in the call. Okay, okay. Uh, um, Dari, we have challenges, what? technical challenges. Um, we, we'll attempt to get back to you later. But, but Jide, let's uh, look at another angle to it. Miss Joy Nunye, mm-hmm. uh, according to Akwabio, never committed any corrupt, you know, yes. was not removed because Corrupt she corruption. was, uh, but in subordination. Yes, and that's significant. Okay. Because he said this on TV, and the video is everywhere. He said she was not removed because of corruption, but because of insubordination, that the letters were sent to her. Seven. Yes, that she did not reply. And the woman said... She is the most hated MD in the history of NDDC because she refused to allow people to take money. Uh, money. And she said that, look, um, Akwabio collected names from Godfathers. And mm-hmm. I said, I will not be the one to give employment to people outside the Niger Delta when our people have no jobs. So that he collected money from... All, all, all kinds of uh, all, yeah. all, all the different places and all that. So the truth is, and she also said, oh, Akwabio, uh, that she refused to um, take a note of secrecy that Akwabio wanted to administer. <laughs> no one, no, no, none of us was there. A lot of yeah, the nasty but he has things. Denied it. Uh, has no, denied the nasty it. things that are happening, that they are, they are, they are washing their dirty linen in public. A lot of those things. We find it embarrassing, but it's not in. Uh, there are things difficult to confirm. Yeah. But at least Akwabio confirmed that she was not sacked because of corruption, that she was sacked because of insubordination. And I've said that uh, even in the case of Magu, that you may chase him and not be able to find evidence that he stole money, but you would find evidence of insubordination or lacks supervision mm. of the agency under his care. I said that from the beginning. Mm. So this is the thing. If indeed the woman was not um, 
um, found to be corrupt. And all of what we are talking about did not happen during her time. Then we should be worried about, about the people who replaced her. Mm. Yes, mm. because you can see she has the confidence to go up and down talking mm. because she is confident that she has not done anything in breach of the law. She kept saying, no, the Procurement Act, I will not breach it because I'm not ready to go to jail. She kept saying se that. Se there are some yeah. letters that Kwabio said, write this. She refused to write mm. because she was not going to put herself in trouble. And then suddenly the, the drama yesterday, mm. when her house was surrounded around 4 a.m. Yeah. And Governor Wiki had to go there to chase the policemen away. You know that was the second time that Wiki would do something like that. Let's go to our next story. You know, the unspeakable orgy of violence across states in the north continues without any reduction in intensity or strength. Now, wait a minute. Did Napoleon not say that the world suffers a lot, not because of violence or bad people, but because of the silence of good people? Let's tell you, no less than 24 people have been murdered in cold blood and others injured in three communities in Zango Kataf, local government area of Kaduna State, a coffee is supposed to be in place. A long move must turn the gun violently on ourselves. I, 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 I do not understand why, how it is possible to kill people when there is a curfew. When there is a curfew, the security operatives are meant to police the area, ensure that no one even breaks the curfew in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Now, what happened the first time somebody was killed on a farm and the tension that that generated prompted the government to take a decision to then impose a curfew so that the anticipated um, bloodletting yeah. may not happen. The curfew is supposed to keep everybody in his house and then we'll be able to stop what naturally results what, what from is feared. this kind of mm. uh, um, um, attack on a defenseless person on his farm. But that's not what mm. happened in the end. So it was during that curfew that people now came into the area and began to kill people. And it's not the first time. A few years back, too, there was uh, an attack on a community also in this southern Kaduna. And the people, people had been killed and buried, and government imposed a curfew. And these people, uh, the, the assailants came back why the coffee was on to kill more people. How on earth should that be happening? Hmm. How on earth should that be happening? Is I see it as a failure of government to to to, to protect the people. Oh yeah. Because oh, security yeah. men should have been mobilized to the area in the right number so that there would not be a resort to uh, fresh bloodletting. But we are unable to stop. Uh, the bloodletting from happening. And now in the end, about 30 people were uh, invariably killed. We first had about 20, but later on, I think some died in the bush and uh, some of their corpses were recovered. So, because of one person, we were worried about the death of one person, imposed a curfew, but we couldn't stop the killing of more people. I mean, we should be able to protect our, our people uh, a lot more. All right. Um, uh, uh, can we uh, establish a link again with Dari? Dari, are you there? Yeah, Dari. Uh, yeah. Now, Kafan Chan is in the news. Zango Kataf. Uh, Zang okay. Zango, Zango Kataf, Kataf in, yes. uh, in uh, Kaduna State right. is in the news. Uh, and have, that, that's what yeah. we are saying. The, the, the violence is happening not because of the wicked people per se, but good people are not doing anything. If that picture is uh, clear in your mind. 
Yeah, Dari. Okay. Uh, network net, yeah. network challenges. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. You did, let, let's uh, take it on. You know, it, the, the, the governor and the security forces in the place, I think they have security meetings every now and again. It, we saw, we knew this was likely to come, and we are not preempting it. Preemptive measures are what you need at a time like this. Yes. Because it, di it diminishes, uh, this, it destroys, damages the spirit of the people when you talk about security and so on and so on. I, I'm sorry about this. This is crazy. I, I, to, to kill people. Look, look, look at the pictures on your screen. To kill people. In peace time. Uh, in peace time. And when there ought to be a curfew in place. Is, is what I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Because that curfew is supposed to keep everyone in check yeah. and ensure that the, the, the matter doesn't escalate. But that's the time that some people now chose to go and kill people. I know that our armed forces are uh, very much overwhelmed. There's no doubt about it. There are so many local governments in Kaduna where most of the time, the stories you hear is about killing of people. And, Kajuru, uh, uh, yeah. Chikun, Brinengwari, uh, Giwa, uh, Kauru, Kaura, uh, Jama, and uh, Igabi. You keep hearing about people being killed, people being killed either by bandits or uh, other criminals. So yeah. it, something must be done to protect our people better. Mukhtar is in Kano. Mukhtar, welcome to the show. Uh, good evening, Mr. Citizen Jones, and good evening also to, to Baba Jide. We greet you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, double sorry, because our country, there is a collapse in our security system. We yes. have to admit, we do respect to the government. But normally you see killings of innocent citizens, children, women, all people, all over the country. It's yeah. unfortunate. The government saw in that they will protect life and property. Now, what's happening? Where are the police? Where are the DSS? Where are the military? I mean, do we have to wait until we are all killed? Mm -hmm. Then me, I quote, I quote, I quote, then Juma said one day that everybody should wake up and defend himself. Mm -hmm. And what is, what is happening with the government? The looting there, uh, you know, the looting there, money, everything money. But no attention is given to the citizens. And billions, billions of naira are being spent recklessly. It's unfortunate, Mr. Tilly. Are we really people? Are we really serious? Are we a serious nation that we cannot defend our people? And we go on losing money, uh, creating a panel, a domestic panel, mm. uh, you know, a life a rivalry between the two agencies, yeah. ministry, a collection uh, because of money. Thank there you. is no coordination. There is no synergy between parasitas and ministry. I mean, what is wrong? What is wrong with that? Th thank you, Butra Mukhtar. Thank you. Very a crazy, a crazy time. And uh, mm. I talked about in, we are really living in interesting times. Um, there's no doubting that. And uh, you know, the other day, you remember the Katsina governor said he had severed whatever link he had with the bandits and so on. Yes. You expect a blank, a, this thread to run through parts of the north. But what? it provokes this, uh, th this theory, the, w w what do you call it now, the conspiracy theory that some people somewhere must be enjoying the show. Yes, I... But the truth is, people have seen that they can make money by abducting Nigerians, and a lot of the people who are abducting Nigerians are not even Nigerians. They are exploiting the weakness mm. of our security forces. There is a video in circulation uh, in which people of Jibia in Kasina State were pressing the security forces of Niger Republic, that whenever they, they call for help, those Nigerian gendarmes will come in and flush out the bandits. But that when it is our own armed forces that they uh, alert, they will not come on time. So, sorry, they will come they, when they've been killed. Sorry, this, this call is from Kaduna itself. 
Uh, Danjuma Sarki is uh, reaching us from Kaduna. Danjuma, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Citizen Jones. And uh, good evening to our, our viewers. So what can you share with us? Uh, actually, I want to express my total uh, condemnation to the insecurity that have gradually pervaded most part of our country, Nigeria, today. Most especially the northern part of the country, and specifically to Kaduna State, where I live and where I know much more about. Mm. Uh, you know, in Kaduna, we have not about nine local governments or so thereabouts that have experienced different kind of insecurity from kidnapping to bandit attack to militia to full men attack. And what have you? And this thing has, it keeps growing and has become unabated. The mm. government have refused uh, to oh. take any measure in order to cop this. Whenever these kind of attacks will, uh, will, will happen, there are intelligence that are normally gathered by security agents and people in these various communities. And it will be adequately passed to government, yeah. and the government will fail to act. And this has continuously it made these crisis to become so prevalent. It is moving from one local government to the other, and people are killed, people are kidnapped, women are raped, uh, uh, business, people, businesses are uh, uh, displaced, yeah. and cattle are arrested, and what have you. Th th you thank know, you. Particularly now coming to... Th uh, th th thank you, thank you very kindly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did did they didn't eventually uh, talk about Zongo Kataf, just looked at it. Yep, an overview tells you mm. it, it's on the mind. It, it, it's on the mind. But, you know, Governor um, El Rufai must be a totally exasperated man. So you expect him to, to act. Yes, and I, I know that... Um, Beyond placing coffee, announcing coffee and so on. Should that? Yes, it's yes. Possible. But you see, for most, go, it's, it's a governor, but he's not um, in charge of the armed forces is not in charge of the, the police. If he was in charge, I'm sure he would know the right way to deploy them and he will use them efficiently in this um, state. But it's not the only one. Mm. Whether it is Sokoto that you are talking about or Casina, bandits have taken over. So it's not in Kaduna alone that these bandits are running riot. The problem with Kaduna is that it's not just bandits alone that are killing people. Okay. There, there are ethnic militias also killing okay. people. Yeah. So that's why it, uh, it is worse in its own area, you know. But when you look at Kasina, at least 10 to 12 local governments are um, under the siege of bandits. So it is a solution that must come from Abuja. Okay. Okay. In my view, because this thing is beyond these governors. I'm sure that the governors can't be happy watching their people die. If yeah. The governor of Casina, for example, said, look, I can't, I can't stand it. But what can he do? He has tried to, to adopt uh, the um, amnesty option. It didn't work. And I said, I will not uh, negotiate with uh, oh, yeah. uh, bandits. Oh, yeah. But he, still, he too is unable to... To, to stop G the killings. G G G G sometimes I, I, I think we, re re we really are adding vent, you know, more oil or petrol to the... When you call them bandits, these are criminals. They are criminals. Yes, uh, a bandit is a criminal. That's right. what he is. So let's uh, draw the program to a close here, but not before thanking uh, Dari Udufo We had trouble getting him uh, in, in, in the course of the show. Dari, enjoy your weekend. Okay, uh, Jide, mm -hmm. that's it for the week. Enjoy your weekend. Make the most of it. Enjoy your send, weekend. Too. Send the bills to, to them. To you. All right, you. That's, that's it on the program today. Uh, but if you missed this, there's also the program on other platforms displayed on the screen. It's also at YouTube on youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel remains the same. I'm Citizen Jones. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. And think of the country, think for the country, think about the country, bye bye now.